Good morning. I have to say you all deserve an extra credit for being here in this lousy weather. Uh, last week we had over 45 people here to celebrate our Welcome Sunday. Um, and it's always interesting to see how the weather impacts our attendance, and that is okay. And I'm also glad for those who are tuning in on Facebook Live, we're happy that you're here with us. We are one family, uh, one community. So uh, just a few announcements. We welcome Zoe as our um, soloist today, and she, Cassidy will return, but it's wonderful to have your voice here with us today. So welcome to our community. And uh, you heard the update about the organ. Other announcements are on October 8th, we are going to have the Fall Green Fest here at Sher Sherwood. We will do Blessing of the Animals. We'll have a service here at their normal time. And then we will go outside and along with Pastor Micah from Faith Lutheran, he and I will conduct Blessing of the Animals outside. We, do stu we bless stuffed animals as well as live animals of all kinds and all types of creatures. So if you want to bring your favorite animal or stuffed animal, please do so, and we'll be happy to uh, bless him or bless them um, on that day. And then stick around because there are going to be some tables about the environment um, by, put on by the Beaver Dam Green Team. We're going to do some giveaways. We'll have some pumpkins to give away. It's just an opportunity for the Green Team to get together to share not only what's happening here, but at Faith Lutheran, they too have done some kind of water um, system to help with the flooding that they have uh, through their property. It's much, much less than what we have, but it is still a nuisance just the same, and we're going to be able to show people what they have been doing there and also show our drawings of what we will be doing probably later in 2024. So it should be a wonderful day. Pray for good weather, good fall weather, and come and come for church Join us for the service and then come afterwards for the blessing of the animals and then the Green Fest celebration. Please uh, read the announcements today because a lot of people have been working hard to make last week a success and even just to improve our property. It looks beautiful. Uh, there's a beautiful two um, on the other side, right actually out here under the dogwood, there are two um, benches where you can use as a place for contemplation or prayer or just quiet. And um, one of our members is going to write about the impact that that space has had on her um, as she has become a member of this church. And so she's thrilled to see that area even further spruced up. So thanks to Robin and Jack for all the work that you've done. Um, I think that is about it. There will be some news about Christian formation for youth as well as um, adults next week. But for now, let us focus on today and rejoice that we are well enough to be here together as a community. And let us settle our hearts and minds and open ourselves up to hearing God through the hymns that we will sing, the scriptures that we will hear, and the prayers that we will offer up either silently or aloud. I'm so glad you're with us today.
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 4 through 11. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, Is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give him shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. 
Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 145, verses 1 through 8. We will read responsively by whole verse. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. Our second reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 1, verses 21 through 30. To me, living in Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to part and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is the evidence of their destruction but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you were having the same struggle that you saw I had and now that I still have. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who, are bo who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat? But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Christ. Thank you. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. You know, I must be honest with you. When I read this parable, I often think and want to shout, it's not fair. Those who worked longest in the field should have been paid more than those who simply toiled for one hour. It's not fair was a constant phrase that ran through my household as a child in my own home when our kids were young. It's not fair that she got more ice cream. It's not fair that I always have to do the dishes when there seems to be the most dishes to do. It's not fair that I can't go to the movie when all the other kids can. And the list goes on, and I'm sure all of you can easily fill in the blanks. And so I would like to ask for a show of hands. And I want you to be honest with me and yourself. How many believe it is not fair that those who work the longest in the field got the same exact pay as everyone else, even the people who worked for one hour? Let's be honest. I'm raising my hand alongside you. To be truthful, as I said, I must raise my hand too. It just doesn't seem fair. And quite frankly, if you are not a bit uncomfortable with this parable, 
you haven't looked much beyond its surface. This should make all of us uncomfortably uncomfortable because it challenges all that we humans have come to accept. The real thanks should be given to those who showed up early and toiled for hours in the hot sun. Hard work should be rewarded generously, not idleness and laziness. But I challenge us today to be open to the vision Jesus is sharing. It is a vision that is so different from the society of his time, and quite frankly, our society today. Let us not believe this parable is simply about God, who of course is generous and loving beyond our normal standards. But that's God. That's not us. We must live in this world, and therefore we can't possibly be more like God. Let us not justify our unwillingness to change from the standard human notion that it's not fair. Instead, let us wade in the discomfort of this parable and open ourselves up to the opportunity for growth and spiritual transformation, to begin to see our world through God's eyes, through God's eyes, not ours. What we didn't hear in this gospel reading is the backstory, what happened just before Jesus launches into this parable. In fact, all of chapter 19 of the Gospel of Matthew is about how life should be in the world according to God's vision. And it isn't anything like they were living at the time. Jesus was challenging the patriarchal and the hierarchical society of his time, a society that still pervades many communities and nations today. And so I want to add the last verse of chapter 19 to our reading today. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. And then it launches into, for the kingdom of heaven is like the kingdom of heaven, this is what Jesus is trying to describe in his story to his disciples. And this kingdom of heaven, where the first will be last and the last will be first, is what God wants the world to experience and embrace during their lifetime in the here and the now. God literally wants to love us and all of creation into being who we are truly to be, to experience God's heavenly kingdom now. So Jesus gets his attention by this preposterous parable, by telling also in a way that they can relate. Working in the vineyard, toiling the, the soil would have resonated with his listeners. They knew what it took to produce a crop and to work a day's labor. He hopes that the familiar setting for his story allows them to see it in their own, as their own story, a possibility for them to experience God's kingdom now, not far away, not as some dream, not as a hope. Now, while we may imagine God ranking us, putting someone at his top of his list and those at the bottom, this merely reflects our human understanding of how God sees us. Just remember, God created all of us and he loves us unconditionally despite our flaws, despite our missteps, when we hurt others and even ourselves. And when we ask for forgiveness, which we do every single Sunday, confessing our sins and our misdeeds before God, we are forgiven. God and only God is the final judge. We were reminded of this today in the Old Testament reading when God forgives the people of Nineveh when they turn from their evil ways, just like the workers who toiled in the field all day. But Jonah, he doesn't think it's fair, and he gets angry with God for changing his heart. So let us imagine ourselves within this story. All righty? Or at the very least, let us think about this, and that will leave us thinking a little bit more about this parable 
when we leave here today. So all of you, right here in front of me, on this side of the church, you are the ones that toiled the longest. You were the first to be called, and you went out into the field to harvest the grapes. And this is what was said to you. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers, all of you, for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers, you agreed to this, for the usual daily wage, he sent you out into the vineyard. The landowner agrees to pay you the daily wage. Now, I think it's important to note that this is not a huge amount of money. It was enough to ensure that you could feed your family for a day. That's all it was. It didn't afford you to put some in savings. There were no stock options or any extra special meal, a bottle of wine. Nope, just amount, the amount to cover the basics. So all of you have agreed to work for the landowner, and out you go. Now those of you on my right side, you were the ones who were approached by the landowner at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And Jesus explains it this way. It's about 5 o'clock, and he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go out into the vineyard. You follow his instructions. And did you notice that you weren't guaranteed any money? He merely instructed you at 5 o'clock to go out and begin to labor. And furthermore, the word idle, that it, it, it isn't used well. There isn't a good match to what the Greek word actually meant and what has been translated over generations. The Greek word agorai, something is lost in this translation. What it means is without work. But with, when we hear the word idle, the synonyms are laziness, sluggishness, slothful. Things change, at least perhaps, from your perspective when you begin to hear the deeper meaning of this scripture. And now I want you all to look, literally, look at one another. Look across and look at one another. You know what, Charles, and you know what, Joanne, and all of you on this side, you know these people. You know Jack. You know Jane. You know Derek. You know Zoe. You know them all. And now when you see one another, knowing one another, does it change at all? Does it give you sort of a different perspective? Does it make you stop for just a moment to, before saying, it's not fair? We all know each other's stories. We are all one community. And that is the beauty of a church and a faith community, when we can come together, knowing one another and caring for one another. It's hard to begrudge the other people across the aisle when you just think they're going to get a meal that at least they won't go to bed hungry. There's nothing wrong with that. And I would hope that that's what you would wish for your fellow person. So suddenly thinking it's not fair loses its validity when we view this story through different lenses, even putting on faces to the different groups. For those who worked all day, you actually did get a fair wage. The landowner told them that what they would get, and they got it. And instead of giving thanks, or in the very least, just walking away satisfied, they compare them, themselves to others 
feeling they deserved more instead of realizing they were treated fairly by the landowner. And the landowner, on the other hand, recognizes he is blessed with more. And because we cannot assume that the last ones hired were unworthy of hiring or even lazy, we can now appreciate the landowner's generosity. Everyone that day got a daily wage. The landowner didn't continue to hire throughout the day because he needed more hands. He did so because he had more to share, and he wanted to share it with all of you. Harvesting grapes in that day and age was a community-wide event. And because of his generosity, every one of you got to be a part of the effort, a part of the work, whether it was for an hour or four hours or 10 hours, you worked as part of a community and you all had a role to play. Looking at this scripture from the vantage point of several of its characters, at least for me, shifts my human tendency to see things slowly, solely from my limited perspective, to stop measuring our self-worth on the backs of others, instead gracefully and gratefully accepting God's unbridled love and care for all of us. God doesn't measure us against one another. This is a lesson about God's love for all with no exceptions. This has been Jesus's consistent message as he laid the groundwork for his followers. He was turning human values and perceptions upside down and daring all of us, all of us, to imagine a world where everyone is given the opportunity to be a part of God's kingdom on earth. Yes, we can base our life on human standards of justice and fairness, but that often breeds perceptions that divide individuals and communities and even nations, divisions that breed contempt, and there's fear and distrust and selfish greed, and a me culture that is just counterproductive to creating a better world for all of us. So instead, we can let go of our human desire to control what we view to be right and wrong and see it through the eyes of God. Because these lessons today are about the goodness of God. God loving us into being whole and complete and loved. It doesn't mean life won't be challenging it won't mean that we won't endure hardship or we won't from time to time scream at the top of our lungs, it's not fair. But if we try to let go of the steering wheel, God will undoubtedly take us in directions we never imagined. And it will be in the direction of his kingdom, not ours. Amen. Stand as we are able to recite the Nicene Creed is found on page six, the bottom of page six of your bulletin. And let us say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, 
He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our God is a God of unity, not of division, of love, not of hate, of forgiveness, not of resentment. With open hearts bearing the pain of the world, let us beseech the God of love, saying, we beseech you, O Lord. For our brothers and sisters of every race and nation, for their safety and well-being, for the relief of their sufferings, for the assaging of their hunger and thirst, for the overcoming of enmity, and for those on our parish prayer list, Joe C., Chip, Raymond, Peggy, Sally E., Kevin M., Victor, Joyce T., Kim, Bernie C., Tony, Midge, Barbara, Joan L., Rachel, Doreen, Norma, Virginia, Don M., Isla, Alec, Tom D., Josh F., Michelle G., Patricia, Mason, Catherine, Jessica, Jane, Charles, Mary, Evelyn and Alexander, Bill P, Gay, Mike, and Don. Let us pray to the Lord. For the blessings of this life, for those celebrating birthdays as well as anniversaries, especially Carrie and Scott, let us pray to the Lord. We sit you, Lord. For those people we have come to view as enemies, here and abroad, for the guidance to heal and birth new friendships, let us pray to the Lord. For the churches of the world, let us pray for the healing of divisions, for growth in understanding, for devotion to the truth of the gospel, for our mutual enrichment, and for complete communion in the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. For our homes and families, for an end to disputes, for release from the cycle of violence, for the healing of painful memories, for forgiveness and peace between those who injure, for patience and bearing with one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, your Son made himself the least among us, bore our sins upon the cross, and delivered us from death by his own suffering and dying. 
Forgive us our sins by which we have added to the world's pain and make us instruments of peace and reconciliation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us and the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us greet one another in peace and also our friends on Facebook Live. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. Thank you. Peace, everyone. Good to see you. You may be seated, and now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining the angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us. He revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, We now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of your Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor and glory and praise forever and ever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us stand and pray the post-communion prayer. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ in one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May God's blessing be with you, Christ's peace be with you, and the Spirit's outpouring be with you, now and always. Amen. As we go forth into the world, refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our mission as a congregation, saying together, God commands us to enthusiastically cast open our doors to embrace all, impacting lives through bold service, no exceptions. And now let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.